Kronos then, whom the Phoenicians call Elus, who was king of the country and subsequently, after his decease, was deified as the star Saturn, had by a nymph of the country named Anobred an only begotten son, whom they on this account called Leded, the only begotten being still so called among the Phoenicians. And when very great dangers from war had beset the country, he arrayed his son in royal apparel, and prepared an altar, and sacrificed him. Again see what the same author, in his translation from Sancuniathan about the Phoenician alphabet, says concerning the reptiles and venomous beasts, which contribute no good service to mankind, but work death and destruction to any in whom they inject their incurable and fatal poison. This also he describes, saying word for word as follows. The nature then of the dragon and of serpents tell us himself regarded as divine, and so again after him did the Phoenicians and Egyptians. For this animal was declared by him to be of all reptiles most full of breath, and fiery. In consequence of which it also exerts an unsurpassable swiftness by means of its breath, without feet and hands or any other of the external members by which the other animals make their movements. It also exhibits forms of various shapes, and in its progress makes spiral leaps as swift as it chooses. It is also most long-lived, and its nature is to put off its old skin, and so not only to grow young again, but also to assume a larger growth, and after it has fulfilled its appointed measure of age, it is self-consumed, in like manner as Talvas himself has set down in his sacred books, for which reason this animal has also been adopted in temples and in mystic rites. We have spoken more fully about it in the memoirs entitled Ethophy, in which we prove that it is immortal, and is self-consumed, as is stated before, for this animal does not die by a natural death, but only if struck by a violent blow. The Phoenicians call it, Good Damon, in like manner the Egyptians also surname it Neph, and they add to it the head of a hawk because of the hawk's activity. Apace also, who is called among them a chief hierophant and sacred scribe, and whose work was translated by Arius of Heracleopolis, speaks in an allegory word for word as follows. The first and most divine being is a serpent with the form of a hawk, extremely graceful, which whenever he opened his eyes filled all with light in his original birthplace. But if he shut his eyes, darkness came on. Apes here intimates that he is also of a fiery substance, by saying, he shone through, for to shine through is peculiar to light. From the Phoenicians, Pharisees also took the first ideas of his theology concerning the god called by him Aphian, and concerning the Aphianidae, of whom we shall speak again. <laughs>